AMD's HyperRX feature has been released recently and it is basically a mix of AMD's previous features like Radeon Super Resolution, Radeon Boost and Radeon Anti-Lag. Now also including the newer Radeon Anti-Lag Plus in order to deliver the best experience in terms of FPS numbers at the cost of a little visual fidelity. As seen for example in the video that I made recently about HyperRx where you can see uh, the, the comparisons in terms of FPS, you can see the comparisons in terms of image quality, uh, anti-lag plus on, anti-lag plus off, etc, etc. Now, if this feature is just a mix of features that already existed, what's the point of it then? Can't you just enable those features manually and make a kind of a homemade HyperRx? Well, not really. Why? The point of HyperRx is to have those features working simultaneously, something that you could not do before. As for example, you would have to choose in between, let's say, Radeon Super Resolution, Radeon Boost or Radeon Anti-Lag, and as soon as you enabled one of them, the other would get disabled, something that does not happen with the newer drivers that support HyperRx. The downside of this feature though is that, at least for now, it is only available for the RX 7000 series and even if you have the most recent AMD drivers up to date, the 23.9.1, you still can't enable HyperRX in older generation cards. Unless, of course, you have these modded drivers. These Radeon ID drivers, formerly known as Ameni Maison drivers, actually deliver you the option to use the HyperRX feature with your older generation cards like let's say RX 6000, 5000, Vega and RX 500 series. Well, at least with the 6000 series it works as I tested it with me <laughs> as I tested it with my RX 6750XT and it is working perfectly. And if you're new to this, don't worry because these drivers do not bring any type of viruses, they don't bring any kind of system breaking things. They will most likely work flawlessly on your system, okay? They might have a bug here and there, uh, you might need to clean install the drivers once or twice, but, once again, but, they will most likely work flawlessly in your system. And that's already a plus. And they also have an history of unlocking things like the DX9 and 11 optimizations, smart access memory, noise suppression, and now the HyperRx as well. And this is not all. They also bring the ability, for example, to enable, once again, the recording features and streaming features on the, on the Ryzen APUs, for example, or mobile devices. They also have Radeon Software Customizer, the ability of installing different kernels, and even things like frame buffer compression, that is the ability to compress VRAM usage without losing image quality or performance, and Smart A-Lock, which improves shared VRAM for Ryzen APUs. And this, of course, according to one of the driver's makers, okay? So they know what they're talking about. And so to begin, I'll quickly guide you through the process of doing this, and although it might seem a bit overwhelming at first, don't worry because it is actually pretty straightforward. Like today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Firstly, you go to the link in the description or you search on Google for Amer Nimes Zone and you'll end up in this website where you also get a brief explanation of what these drivers can do versus the official ones. Then all you have to do is to scroll down to the end of the page and download the Polaris Vega Navi 23.9.1 Flex drivers and as the name states, these will work for the RX 4000 series up to the newer 7000 series. Wait for the file to download and save it on your desktop, for example. After that, of course, extract the files and run the setup executable. And as said before, the console installer might seem a bit overwhelming for some, but all you have to do is simply click on the number one for universal Radeon devices and start installing the drivers. As for the next options, you can simply select default Radeon settings, unless of course you need specific things like enabling Radeon Relief for APUs, but don't worry because the drivers will show you and ask you everything in the process, okay? It's way simpler than it looks. And after installing the drivers and rebooting the system, all you have to do is open the console installer once again and choose the AMD Radeon Software Interface Management option that leads you to the one you want called HyperX Overrider. 
Press the number 8 to open it and then select the profile you want to override with the HyperRX and bam, your older GPU can now use HyperRX, having Radeon Super Resolution, Radeon Boost and Radeon Anti-Lag working at the same time. And the only downside that I found with this method is that when using the HyperRX feature on the, the older generation cards, like once again, like my ASRock RX 70, 6750 XT, sorry, um, it will actually override just the global settings. So you can select the HyperRX per game, or you can just go there and select HyperRX. It will automatically override one of the profiles that you have, and it will automatically put Radeon resolution and everything working at the same time on the global settings, okay? So as soon as you disable one of those options, let's say, as soon as you disable, for example, Radeon Super Resolution, and you try to enable it once again, it won't work as it will disable all the other settings, okay? So that's a bummer. And every time that you want to, to do the process once again of enabling HyperRx, you have to go to the console once again, HyperRx override, and select it once again. That's, that's the only downside of the things. But nonetheless, it's working. So AMD could have made HyperRx actually work on the previous generation cards, at least the 6000 series, but they're kind of full on the software side. And if you don't believe me, well, think with me. AMD had big issues when releasing the RX 7900 series, such as we had drivers only for them for a couple of months. Then, when the RX 7600 series released, we had drivers solely for them in the beginning as well. And now that the RX 7700 XT and 7800 XT cards were released, it is exactly the same, with the first driver still having specific versions for these cards. And this alone should tell you how things aren't working as expected for AMD. But there's more. We have HyperRx, for example, that was supposed to be released almost two months before it was, and FSR3, of course, that took over six months to get shown properly running at Gamescom Germany, and of course, was supposed to be released by now, or at least implemented inside Immortals of Avium and Forspoken. And yet, still nothing. <laughs> And I do hope that AMD gets through this phase and actually improve their software features, mostly their upscaling features because they're falling behind pretty bad compared to Nvidia's DLSS 3.5. In terms of upscaling, mostly in terms of upscaling, they're much behind Nvidia because FSR 2.2 is much worse than DLSS 3.5. And we have, we have, we didn't heard anything about FSR 3 upscaling technology so far. We heard about the FSR3 Fluid Motion, so the frame generation technology, but we didn't hear anything about their upscaling technology. So they, if they keep the Fluid Motion with FSR 2.2, it will be much worse as the LSS 3.5 is much better in terms of stability, in terms of reconstruction, everything. So AMD needs to kind of step up in terms of upscaling technologies, even if they have FSR3 Fluid Motion working properly. And of course, if they can manage to bring newer features like the HyperRx to the older generation cards, well, even better. It's a plus. FSR also works, FSR3 will work with older generation cards, but having, for example, HyperRx would be cool as well. And well guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share it. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. And if you want, once again, if you want me to make a step-by-step -step guide of how to install these drivers, leave a comment in the comment section as I'm pretty active there. So I'll most likely read your comments. Uh, leave your comment there and I'll think about it. And if we have lots of comments, telling me that you actually want a step-by-step -step guide of how to install these newer Radeon ID drivers, well, I'll just make the video because I'm here for you guys, I'm here for the community, and I'm also part of the community. And that's one of the most uh, important things that many reviewers forget, is that they are a part of the community as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.